Welcome back to the junk room everybody, it's me, the junk man, coming back at you Well, a whole new video. So, what are we gonna do today? Hmm. Guess I'm running out of things to talk about because we're gonna scrape the bottom of the barrel and talk about Star Wars prices. That's right, retail prices of the old vintage Star Wars figures. How cheap were these figures? How expensive were these figures? How much would you pay for a... Loose Death Loose. How much would you pay for a Death Star back when it was released? I mean, if Hasbro released that today, it would be what? $400 and exclusive at one store that you can never find? What about some of these others? What about that shuttle over there? What did it cost back in the day? Or that Boba Fett? Or any of these other old toys? Now, I'm not gonna run down the whole list of every toy made by Kenner or every Star Wars toy by Kenner, I should say. So we're just gonna look at a few of the big ones. And if you like this video, which I'll be very surprised if you do, maybe we'll do a part two and we'll look at some other toys that we didn't look at here. So I'm gonna look at this list and we're gonna get right to it. But before we get into that, if you'd like to support this channel and get some exclusive content, that's probably better than me just naming prices of old toys, go to patreon.com, links in the description below, or right up there, or head over to that junkman.com and support us by buying a cool t-shirt, like this Kenner one that I love in blue, but now I kinda wish I got it, got it in black. Got all different kinds of colors there. A lot of different shirts, not just Kenner, so check it out. Now, Let's go back to when toys were a lot cheaper than today. Darth Vader, R2-D2, C-3PO, and other Kenner Star Wars action figures, each sold separately. Now, before we get started, let's kind of compare money from back then to today. Now, I'm not going to go through every single dollar. And now, I found a calculator online that shows you what dollars in one year equals to dollars in this year. So, it's pretty interesting. So let's start with $2. $2 in 1978 is equal to about $4 today. $10 in 1978 is about $40 today. $30 equals $117. And $50 gets you close to $200. Now these numbers all change throughout the years, but I just kind of wanted to give a baseline from 1978. So let's go. We're going to look at 1978 prices, 1980 prices, 1983 prices, and the final year for new Star Wars figures, 1985. Let's go to a toy that every kid wanted or every kid had. This was a must for your Star Wars collection. If you bought Star Wars toys and played with Star Wars toys, this was a must have. We're talking about the Star Wars Millennium Falcon. This was like playset and a ship. You had it all in one and it was huge. So you know it cost your parents a lot of money or Santa Claus back in 1978 when it was released. How much did it cost them? Well, I'm going to look over here and tell you. The average price was $24.77. Now, this was back before everything ended with 99 cents like they do today, or Walmart 98 cents. And you may be asking yourself, how did I get these prices? Well, I kind of did an average. Now, you might find the Falcon in a 1970 ad that goes for less of this, or actually more. But, I kind of did an average of what I could find online. It seems most places were selling it for around $25 or $24.77 when it was or $24.77 when it was released. Not bad, right? $24, of course. And as we said, $30 equals $117 in today's money. So you can kind of get a ballpark of what the Falcon probably would have ran for $80, $90 in today's dollars. Pretty cool. The Falcon, big toy, big price tag. And another one that had a big price tag for 1978 was this one right over here on my shoulder, the Death Star. That's right, we talked about it a few minutes ago. Now I'm going to tell you the price on it. Let me see. Roughly $18. $17.95. $17.95 is what most retail prices were. So right there around $18. Which isn't all that bad when you think about it. Like I said, if Hasbro did this today, it'd probably be $400 and you would never see it at the store anyway, so it wouldn't matter. Or they'd probably put it on some website where you have to fund it and it'd be $900 or something crazy. And it would make a lot of sounds, which would be kind of neat, but sometimes just a basic playset is all kid needs. What else are we gonna talk about? The Darth Vader TIE Fighter. How much was it? The Darth Vader TIE Fighter you have to have a Luke Skywalker X-Wing, right? I've got one sitting right... 
Where's my X-Wing? Oh, there's my X-Wing. If you can see it, not really sure. Not sure my big old fat belly gets in the way, but if you can see it, there's the X-Wing. How much did my, probably my grandma or my parents pay for an X-Wing back in 1978? Well, let me move my eyes this way and I'll be able to tell you because I can't remember these prices in my head. $9.95. Same as a Darth Vader TIE Fighter? No, because I read the wrong thing. The Darth Vader TIE Fighter, the average price was $11.44. So, it was a little bit more than the X-Wing, which is surprising because they're both basically about the same size. Different shapes, sure, but they both made the same sound and you would think they'd be about the same, but the Darth Vader TIE Fighter was a little bit more. Again, the X-Wing fighter, like the one back there, sold for a uh, sold for $9.95. At least that's the average price. Now there's one thing all action figures need, and that's a home, a place to put your action figures. The first Star Wars action figure carrying case, what did it go for? What did it cost people to put their action figures in it? Well, believe it or not, that was only an average price, price of $5.66. Not bad right there, a little bit more than an action figure. You may be asking yourself, Junkman, how much does an action figure go for? Well, we're going to talk about that closer to the end of the video, being that it has so many different prices from each year. We're going to save that for the end. Uh, what else are we going to talk about today? The large size action figures, like that Boba Fett over there. Can you see that Boba Fett? It's one of my favorite figures. It looks really cool. Boba Fett. And how much did these large size action figures cost back in the day? Well, let's take a look. The average price, $10.44. I wish I could get you now for $10.44. Man, now all these uh, large scale figures were about the same price. And again, this is an average, depending on where you bought it at. If you bought it at some, if you bought it at Fred's drugstore, it might have cost you $15. What else we got on the list here? This one's a little different. It's the RC Sandcrawler. Not the normal one that you play with with the figures, but this is the remote control one. The one that goes forward and backwards and forward and backwards, as I said in the commercial. So, you know it's a little bit more than just a standard plastic toy that makes sounds. This is a cool RC one. Uh, how much is it going for? The, the average price for that? $29.88. $29.88. And that was what? the That's more than the Falcon, which you can kind of see. It might be smaller than the Falcon, but it's electronic. It's RC, so you know it's going to run you a little bit more. Um, let's go back to something a little smaller here. The Dubek. That's right. The green dinosaur monster that the Stormtroopers rode on. That's small. So how much do you think kids paid for back in 1978? Well, they paid an average price of $8. $7.99, actually. But... Eight dollars. We can round that off to eight dollars. And also, we'll go if you jump ahead to 1980, the Tauntaun, which was like the do back of the Empire Strikes Back, but it was white. How much is that? An average price of about eight dollars. So the Tauntaun and do back will run you about the same price. What else do we got? Uh, let's go back. Let's stay on the Empire Strikes Back and look at one of the biggest and best toys of that line, the Ad Ad. That's right, I said ad at. I didn't say AT AT, because it's not. It's an ad at. And this was big, nice, made a lot of sounds, made sounds, lit up. It did a lot of cool stuff. This was a toy of the Empire Strikes Back collection that almost all kids begged for and wanted. If you didn't have it, you really wanted this one. This was a must have. It would make your friends jealous. This was a great one to have. How much did the ad at run you back in 1980? Well, let's take a look over here. And believe it or not, it's the most expensive one. $49.99. That's right. Almost $50. Or right at $50. Actually over $50 when you when you count in the taxes. $50 for the ad at. Whew. Now you can see why a lot of kids didn't get it on Christmas like they thought. I mean $50. Let's see. $50 in 1978 was $200. So we're looking at maybe maybe by 1980 it went down a little bit. So let's say between $190 to $200 is how much you would have to pay for a ad at Walker back in 1980. You can see. Now we looked at the carrying cases, the small carrying case, but there's one carrying case that I think everybody had. I think even if you didn't have kids in the 80s, it was some kind of law where you had to have this. Or maybe when you got your tax refund, you got a free one also. We're talking about the Darth Vader carrying case. I mean, this thing is everywhere. You always see this thing. This thing is so popular. It was redone in the 90s in the uh, Star Wars Bend them Just Toys line. And Hasbro actually redid it also with their Star Wars toy line. Like I said, everybody had this thing, even people that didn't have Star Wars. So how much did the Darth Vader carrying case run you? Well, let's take a look. 
Where am I at? I lost my phone. Oh, $11.99. Right there, that $12 mark. Pretty cool. Not bad. Like I said, more than the figures, but hey, you can understand that. What else do we have here? Okay, we're going to talk about the Rebel Troop Transporter. Now, this is the big Rebel Troop Transporter that it's kind of like a carrying case, but it's a ship. You can put a lot of figures in this thing. I never had this as a kid. Never really liked it. I never really, you know, with all the other stuff out there, this was never on the top of my list. Never did have it. Uh, but how much did the Rebel Troop Transporter cost you? It's kind of expensive. In 1980, it was $30. $29.99 to be exact. $30. We'll round it up and say $30. So that was more than the Falcon. Can you believe that? Who would pick that over the Falcon? I'm kind of surprised it's that much. Maybe because of the size of it, but... From what I remember, it didn't make sounds, did it? I didn't think it did, but I could be wrong. I haven't seen one in years. But there was one very cool ship I had to have back in the 80s, and I'm sure you liked it too, and that was Boba Fett's Slave One. That's right. Now, it came with a Star Wars figure, kind of. It was a Han and Carbonite, but it was a big hunk of plastic. It wasn't an actual figure like they did in 1985. So, how much did Slave run? Slave One. How much did Slave One cost you back in 1980? Let's take a look here. Slave One. Six dollars and ninety-nine cents. Almost seven dollars right there. Can you believe it? The average price was running you almost close to seven dollars. Not bad at all. Uh, another one released in that line. Now this isn't a toy, uh, an action figure, but I wanted to throw this in because it was something we, most of us had as a kid back in the 80s or really wanted. And that was the Han Solo, or I guess Luke Skywalker, also Pistol. Remember this, the laser gun? I love this. This is a cool little gun to have. It made a sound. It sounded like a dentist drill. It sounded like he was getting teeth work done. How much was it? Believe it or not, it was only $8.99. Man, man, what a lot of these prices today. Whew. Which, uh... When you think a toy gun for nine dollars isn't probably that much, probably you probably spend about that today, but maybe a, maybe a little bit higher, not too bad. One of the worst toys I had, or it was me, it was kind of cool. It wasn't that great. It was the twin cloud car? Mm, look, like I said in my other video Monday, it looked like orange shoes, but I mean it was okay. How much did it run, kids? Six dollars. Did I look at the right one? Yeah, six dollars and ninety-nine cents for the same price you get the slave one or the orange clown shoes. I mean, come on, which one would you get? <sighs> Never was a big fan of that. Now let's go. Oh, let's talk about this. The snow speeder. The snow speeder was pretty cool too. It had lights that lit up, made sounds, had a harpoon on the back. You could hold two figures in it, and they could actually sit side by side or behind each other. Unlike the cloud car pilot, where they're one over here, the cloud car is one over here, one over here. How do they even communicate? Why they even in the ship together? They can't even talk to each other. It made no sense at all. So how much did the snow speeder cost you? Cost you the same as the slave one or the cloud car? Yeah, uh, six ninety nine. That's right, six dollars and ninety nine cent. Uh, what else we got here? Now let's look over at the Micro Machine collection. Micro Machine. Why do I call it Micro Machine? It's not the Micro Machines. Oh. Let's talk about the Micro Collection from Star Wars. This was a failed toy line, which is loved. I mean, it's a great one, and uh, I did a whole video on it and talked about some that wasn't released, even in Indiana Jones Micro Collection series and Superpowers that were never released. Check out those videos. But let's look at the Millennium Falcon one. That's a good one to look at. This is the Falcon. Came with a bunch of figures. Very cool micro collection play set to have. And it ran $19.99. Yeah, we're back up seeing those 99s now like you see today in a lot of stores. But night, roughly $20 was the average. Not too bad, but got a Death Star a little cheaper. But anyway, 20 is not too bad because you got a lot of figures with it. Uh, they did the Bestman World. This is where they took each little Bestman set. Or if, when they did the world set, it was taking each, you know, they did like a little Bestman set, like four different ones, then the Bestman world. They did that with each one. You had a little Hoth set, and then Hoth world that came with all the sets together. So what would the Bestman set cost you if all, all of them, the Bestman world? Well, it would have cost you $34.99. That's right, an average price of around $35. Whew, I should round these up. Y'all don't really care about the 99 cents, do you? Uh, another one, the Hoth Cave. Let's look at the Hoth. Now, this is the Hoth Cave. This is just a small part of the Hoth Cave. It's not the whole Hoth world. And that would have ran you $8.99. Again, these are average prices. You might see them higher and lower depending on where you look. So don't try to call me out. Now, we talked about Empire and A New Hope. So let's move on to Return of the Jedi. And let's talk about one of the fun ones you had to have also because it's a figure and a playset. 
That's Jabba the Hutt. That's right. It was a little small playset that came with a Jabba the Hutt action figure. Yes, Jabba the Hutt is an action figure. I don't care what you say out there. Jabba the Hutt is an action figure. It's not a creature. How much would that have run you? $14.99. Not really bad. I don't really think about average price, but again, it's hard to kind of wrap in your head that the price is in. I mean, how? what is $14? What is $15 in 1983 compared to today? Probably $20, $30. Uh, let's see, thirty dollars in nineteen. Let's see, twenty ten dollars in nineteen seventy eight was forty dollars a day. So let's just say the Java probably were running about thirty five or forty dollars in today's dollars back in nineteen eighty three. Um, this one's action figure related. It's the size noodles band. It comes with all three figures from the band. You know, before the special edition ruined that. Um, what did it retail for? $13.99. That's right, right at $14. Not bad. You got three figures, and you got a little piano for uh, Max Rebo. Yeah, that's who plays the piano? Sorry, it's been a while. Been a long day. Um, another cool toy to have for the Return of the Jedi line, of course, was the Rancor. The Rancor was a great monster. As long as you didn't let it eat Yoda or a Jawa, a Ugnut, one of the small figures, because you get stuck in that thing's belly, you're never getting out. Why didn't they make an open hatch somewhere at the bottom of the toy? I don't know. It would have been a lot better than trying to turn that thing upside down and shake it violently until you can get that figure out. And most of the time, you didn't. Uh, how much did it run you? Fourteen ninety nine. Not bad. Fourteen dollars right at fifteen dollars. Not bad. At same price as a Jabba playset. And I think I would rather had a Rancor of the two, but I don't know. You kind of had to have that Jabba. He's such a main character. It was hard not to have it. Now let's talk about this shuttle over here. See that shuttle? Love that shuttle. Uh, how much did that cost a kid back in the day? How much do you think that cost? What do you think? Well, it cost an average price of $39.99. So about $40. So, let's see. $50 and 70 So, I'll let you do the math on that. But $50 back then, sure not going to get that for $50 a day. Probably going to cost you a little over 100 uh, another one of my favorite ships in the world was the B-Wing. I love the B-Wing. I love that you spin it around the cockpit don't the cockpit turns so the figure's never upside down. I love the B-Wing. Always love the B-Wing. Like the B-Wing. I said B-Wing more than I've ever said it before today. I love the B-Wing. I'm gonna talk about the B-Wing all day. And you know who sits inside the B-Wing? The B-Wing pilot. That's right, B-Wing and a B-Wing pilot. How much did the B-Wing go for? Well, $24.99. No more expensive than I would have thought. $24.99, $25 right there. Um, now let's go into the power of the force and talk about just one vehicle that was released. I guess you call it a vehicle, accessory. And that's the tattooing skiff. I've got a fake one right over there. <laughs> don't mean, I don't think you can see it on the camera, but maybe. I'm not going to say it's fake, but it's from the 90s. I don't have the vintage one. Well, the vintage one. It's one of my holy grails to have the vintage tattooing skiff. But for now, that one from Hasbro will do. So what did that run, kids, back in 1985? $15.99. Now, when we're talking about the Power of the Force line, these are the retail price what they came out as. As people know, that toy line failed. That was the end of Star Wars, and you could pick a lot of Star Wars toys up at this time in 1985 on clearance. Dirt cheap. <sighs> if only we had a time machine, right? You know what I'm saying. Time machine. Oh, yeah. Now, let's look at the figures. Let's see what the figures gone. We're going to look at each year new figures came. Well, new movies came out for that toy line. And get an average uh, price for these figures. Let's go back to 1978. Where the $2 in 1978 equaled 40 uh, $2 in 1978 is $4 today. So, in 1978, the original 12 figures retailed roughly around $1.78. That's right. $1.78. Which is two dollars or so? You're looking at a little under four dollars in today's dollars. That's a lot cheaper than even the toys you buy today. That's break about the time you open them, and get them out of the box. Um, in 1980, when the Empire Strikes Back came out, influence it hit, and action figure prices were going up. I mean, this was Star Wars. You could charge almost anything for it. So, how much did the average Empire Strikes Back figure cost you in 1980? One dollar and ninety-seven cents. Still under two dollars. Can you believe it? What a good deal. And then in 1983, we really saw inflation hit and were the Return of the Jedi action figure line as they sold for $2.59. Whew, yeah, they were reaching the skies then. Oh, 
And then the last line, 1985's Power of the Force figures, the price went up again, this time, to about $2.87. Not bad, really, at all. Not bad. And like I said, with the Power of the Force line, that line fell. People was moving away from Star Wars. And myself, I remember myself walking into a KB toy store and seeing Power of the Force figures. All I can remember on top of my head seeing was the Ewoks or maybe a few others didn't really care about them. And you could find them two for a dollar. Two for a dollar. Probably even cheaper than that. And some people, I'm sure you've seen them out there. I all remember about that line because I was out of Star Wars by then. It's telling my brother, hey, I saw Star Wars figures for the new movie called Power of the Force. I thought a new movie was coming out called Power of the Force. I was a dumb kid. Anyway, is that it? That's it. That's a look at prices back in the day, which some of us refer to as the good old days. Was it the good old days for you? I don't know. It's funny. You didn't realize how good the 80s were until they were long gone. Well, I want to thank you for watching. As always, please thumb up this video and subscribe to the channel. And leave me in the comments below. What did you pay for your Star Wars toys back in the day? Hopefully you didn't pay anything and your mom and dad bought it for you. Or what do you think about prices today? Are they overpriced or looking at these prices there? Are they about what you would expect them to be today? Who knows? Let me know in the comments below. Fred, take us out of here. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.